purpose of this video is to prepare you for the problems that you'll encounter in section 8.2 about ellipses. You'll see here that we have the definition of an ellipse. An ellipse is the set of all points in a plane. The sum of whose distances from two fixed points is constant. Each fixed point is called a focus of the ellipse. Here we have a graph of a horizontal ellipse, horizontal because it's kind of sideways, more wide than it is tall. And it's obviously not a function, it would not pass the vertical line test. And notice we have two points. We have a focus here and a focus here. And right here in the middle is the center of that ellipse. So uh, an ellipse has a center. <clears throat> so this is horizontal, so it has a longer horizontal axis. And that horizontal axis is called the major axis. And notice that the, each, the foci, that's plural for focus, they are on either side of the center along the major axis. So, and then the minor axis is the shorter axis. The foci are not on the minor axis, they're always on the major axis. And when you ha talk about the vertices of an ellipse, you're always talking about these two points here. So the vertices of an ellipse are the endpoints of the major axis. Okay, you see some different letters here. Notice we have this number A. This particular ellipse is centered at the origin. And when it's centered at the origin, the vertices are A units from the center. And the endpoints of the minor axis are B units from the center. The foci, there are two of them, they are C units from the center. Now, on an ellipse, <clears throat> there's the relationship between A, B, and C. For one thing, A is always going to be greater than B. and A is always going to be greater than C. And the relationship between A, B, and C on an ellipse is C squared equals A squared minus B squared. And this will always be a positive number because A is always larger than B. Okay, let's look at what the equation of an ellipse looks like. You just saw one that was centered at 0, 0 at the origin. But they don't have to be centered at the origin. Here we're talking about these are the general equations for an ellipse centered at the point HK. So we're always going to call the center of the ellipse HK, just like the center of a circle is HK. And in fact, if you have an ellipse, if A happens to be equal to B, then you don't have a major axis and a minor axis. They're both the same, and that's how you get a circle. So a circle is actually an ellipse where A and B are the same. 
So here, if you look at the equation for an ellipse centered at HK, it can have a horizontal or a vertical axis. So you can have a horizontal ellipse that will look something like this, or you can have a vertical ellipse, ellipse that looks something like this. Now you can tell from an equation which type of ellipse it is, because remember a is always bigger than b, and notice in this first equation here that a squared is under the x's that's going to give you a horizontal major axis. So a horizontal ellipse is one in which the larger denominator, a squared, is under the x's. And then if you look at the second equation there, notice on the second one that a squared is under the y's, not under the x's. So what gives you a vertical ellipse like this is when the larger denominator is under the y's. So I'm just going to make up an equation of an ellipse and we'll see what it would look like, what kind of ellipse it would be and how we would go about graphing it. Notice on both of these equations, whether it's horizontal or vertical, so this was our horizontal ellipse because the a squared is under the x's and this is a vertical ellipse because a squared is under the y's. And no matter which type of ellipse you have, the number over on the right hand side is always one. Okay, let's write the equation of an ellipse. and talk about it. So let's suppose we had x minus two squared over <coughs> four plus, an ellipse always has plus, like a circle, y plus one squared over nine equals one. Let's see what we can tell from this equation. First of all, the way I know it's an ellipse and not a circle is because if it were a circle, these two numbers would be the same, the four and the nine. They'd both be fours or both be nines. Then that would make it a circle. But because they're different, it's an ellipse. Now, because the larger denominator is under the y's, I know, so this is going to be, the larger denominator is a squared. That means this one is b squared. And because a squared is under the y's, we know that this one is vertical. So a quick little sketch would look like that. <clears throat> Other things we can tell from this equation is we can tell where the center of the ellipse is. The center of the ellipse is at the point 2, negative 1. And notice we took the opposite of the number next to x to get the x coordinate and the opposite of the number next to y to get the y coordinate, just like we did with circles. We already said what a squared and b squared are. We've said that it's vertical. So if it's vertical, that means 
your major axis is going to be like that, and the minor axis is going to be like that. And we'll try to sketch a graph of this in a minute. So another thing we could do is we could find out what the foci were, or at least how far they are from the center. So if I wanted to find, to, to figure out how far the foci are from the center, you would want to find C. So in an ellipse, recall that C squared is A squared minus B squared. It looks like Pythagorean theorem, but has a minus in it, and the A squared always goes first. So C squared in this case would be 9 minus 4, and that would give us C squared equals 5. So that would mean C would be square root of 5. And we would just leave that like that for now. And this C here, that's the distance from the center to each focus. Okay, I'm going to try to graph this now. So I'm going to draw a coordinate plane, and let's see, since our center is at 2, negative 1, um, that means that our ellipse is going to be centered in quadrant 4. So I'm going to move this over a little bit. Give us lots of room in quadrant four. I'm going to try to make the marks equally spaced as much as I can. So the center of the ellipse would be right here at 2, negative 1. I'll just label it with a C. Now since it's a vertical ellipse, to get to the endpoints of the major axis, I'm going to go up A and down A. So this center, remember, was at 2, negative 1. So I'm going to go up A units and down A units. We had already figured out on this one, since a squared is 9, that means a is 3. So from the center, I will go up 3. 1, 2, 3. There will be one vertex, and it will be located at 2. And since we added 3, it's going to be at 2, 2. And then we'll go down 3. 1, 2, 3. So I'll have another vertex right here. The x-coordinate will be 2, the same as the center, but the y-coordinate, so we went down 3. So negative 1 minus 3 would be negative 4. And those would be the endpoints of the major axis. Then to get the endpoints of the minor axis, we're going to go left and right b units. So over, back over here, since b squared was 4, b is going to be 2, the square root of 4. So from the center, I'm going to go right 2. That will give me this endpoint of the minor axis, and left 2, which is going to put me right here at negative 1 there on the y-axis. And this point will have the point 4, negative 1. And now that I have those points drawn, I can draw the ellipse, and this one's going to look a little bit circular, but that's because A is 3 and B is 2, so they're pretty close to being the same number. Um, so when you draw an ellipse, you want to connect these four points as best you can with smooth curves. And that's how you would graph an ellipse. And that's kind of the basics of ellipse. I've drawn a vertical one for you here. Remember, a sideways or horizontal ellipse would occur when b squared was bigger than a squared, when the bigger denominator was under the x's.
that will give you a sideways ellipse. And that's our ellipse lesson.